This video was brought to you by my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. When we have all the instruments and the tracks, everything structured, which was what we did in the previous video, it's time to mix and match our song. Oh, stay tuned to the end of the video because I have a tip for those who want to go deeper in the arts of mixing and mastering. Well, mixing is the process of picking all the instruments, the facts, everything, and, well, mixing it all together so that they make sense within the song's context. We are going to approach mixing as if each instrument were an actual instrument, a physical instrument, like in a, an orchestra for instance, and our audience, the listeners, will be right in front of the stage, listening to everything together. Well, picture that for a moment, imagine a stage with all the instruments and how the, the disposal of each instrument will affect how the audience will experience each, uh, will experience the whole song. So if an instrument plays on the left, the, how this will affect the audience, if an instrument plays right in front of the audience, how this will affect their experience. This is how we are going to approach that. In that sense, since the analog bass is a bit too low, we are going to increase its volume, bringing it right in the front of the audience. But we are also going to move it to the left, because uh, this will allow other instruments to still have some room to breathe and to play together. For instance, we are going to, to use the analog filter, we are going to pan it to the right instead. We are not going to move it to, to the front, we are going to keep the volume as it is, but we are going to move it to the right so we can take some of this room left from the bass. The synth pad is already loud enough, and since it, it will be performing a solo, it already takes the room it needs to shine. So we are going to move it to the back of the stage by decreasing its volume. Now, the drums need a lot of adjustments. Uh, firstly, we can move them to the back of the stage because they are taking a lot of the room available, so they are too loud for us. And we are going to decrease both the kick and the snare volume, especially the snare, let's decrease it by uh, 50%. Since the snare is way back in the stage, naturally it will reverb a lot more. So let's increase the wetness of its reverb effect, which was an effect that we added in the previous video. The kick though is still sounding way too loud, it sounds like a NATO weight or something. Uh, this is because uh, the lowest frequencies are still very high, so they are giving a long tail to the to the kick, like boom, boom. And this is, don't let other instruments to, to breathe a lot. So we are going to add a equalizer to fix that. An equalizer is like an advanced filter. It has some frequency specific knobs each affecting a different frequency range, which allows us to smoothly cut off some frequencies while it's still boosting others. An equalizer is another tool that we can use to design our instruments. To give a snappy, punchy feel to the kick, we are going to move the first knob of the EQ to the right so we can cut off some lower frequencies, and we are also going to attenuate this effect by decreasing the resonance so we get a smooth curve. To really prevent the drums to go beyond a range, we are going to add them a limiter effect to both the snare and the kick. And to do that to both of them, we are going to use a mixing table. In the previous video, we saw how we can apply effects to each instrument individually. But using a mixing table, we can group instruments together and apply a given effect to all of the instruments inside this group. We call these groups channels. You can add a new channel by clicking on the plus button on the right of the mixing table. We can create a new channel, let's name it, I don't know, drums, and send both the kick and the snare to the same channel. Then we can add a hard limiter to this channel effects chain, and this will make so that this effect will apply to both the snare and the kick.
Oh, just so you know, limiters are effects that work by decreasing the volume of frequencies that go beyond a given threshold, a given volume. So this is perfect for what we need because limiters don't clip the frequencies. They attenuate the frequencies, keeping them all within a given range. Now that we have our drum set, we need to open some room for them during the music. We can do that by lowering other instruments' volumes right when the drums kick. When we have that kind of situation where the volume of some instruments is linked to another instrument, we can use side chaining. To understand how side chaining works, you need to understand how a compressor works first, because a side chain is a compressor. So a compressor is a type of effect that will compress the, the instruments, the effects, the frequencies within a given dynamic range. So anything that goes beyond, it will decrease. Anything that is still low, is lower than the, the given range, it will increase, it will boost its volume. So everything will kept within the same average uh, volume. This is how a compressor works. A side chaining uses this effect, applies this effect based on another signal. So for instance, when the drums kick, we will compress other frequencies so the drums will have some room to breathe. We can create a new channel to bundle the analog instruments. So the analog bass, the analog strings and the analog filter all together. And then we can apply the side chain compressor effect in this channel. But now, how can we make the kick control the sidechain? Well, turns out that we have an effect called peak controller. A peak controller basically takes, uh, whenever an instrument plays, it will send a signal to a controller, a control, and we can use this control to control any property of an instrument or an effect. So we are going to use this peak controller to control the sidechaining levels. But here goes the trick to side chaining on synth wave. On synth wave, the side chaining is asynchronous with the drums. We can't use the same signals because uh, on synth wave, the side chaining will work on every music step. So it works like not together with the drums because we have some drum rolls, we have some snare rolls, and we don't want that to interfere in our side chaining. So for that, we are going to create a new instrument based on the, the kick. And we are going to add this peak controller to that new kick and we are going to play this kick on every music step. Now we can assign this peak controller to the sidechain's level knob. By tweaking it a bit we can fine tune how it will affect the sidechaining and get exactly what we want. Mastering is usually the final step of music production. It is when we add equalization to the whole song, we add some compression as well to keep everything consistent, uh, some limiters to prevent some loudness, and get the song ready for exporting. I don't know if you noticed, but since the beginning that was a default channel on the mixing table. You can try to remove it, but usually you can't. This is because this is the master channel. Every instrument and other channels will send a signal that will end up in this channel, the master channel, and the master channel will send the signals, will send the song, the whole song built up to the output of the computer, to the audio output. The process of measuring is called this way because usually you are working with this channel, with the master channel. In the measuring process, since we are going to try to make everything sound good together, it's usually a good practice to visualize the song. So we can see if there is any frequencies that are lacking some volume or if something is too loud. For that, we can use a spectrum analyzer, a kind of effect that will plot the song using the frequencies and their loudness, and using that we can analyze the song visually. So we are going to use two spectrum analyzers, one for the raw song and one for after we apply every effect. Then we can add an EQ, an equalizer, to boost some middle frequencies and attenuate the others, especially the lowest ones and the highest ones. 
Here is where compressors, the common compressors, are also useful. We can add an, a compressor to keep everything within the same dynamic range, to keep every frequency sounding uh, on average the same way. And also we are going to add a hard limiter to prevent any clipping and any loudness. Well, with that, we have everything ready to be played without fearing of hurting anyone's ears. From here, you can add more effects to your song to make it feel more dynamic. For instance, I created a new channel, a, an equalization channel with an EQ effect on it, and I send the output of the sidechain channel to this new channel, to the equalization channel, and also I send the output of the synth pad to this equalization channel as well. After that, I automated the eighth channel of this effect of the equalization to cut off some high frequencies until we get only the lowest ones. So we get this very bassy song. And I also animated, I automated it to quickly release all the frequencies all together to give this wavy effect. Guys, everything that I showed you in this video is just a tiny bit of what I learned from Young Guru's master classes on Skillshare. If you want to push your song to the next level, to a really professional level, I've put two links, one for each of the classes that I watched to make this video, on the description. You can use them to get 14 free days of premium membership on Skillshare instead of the usual 7 days. So that way you can enjoy these and hundreds of other classes on Skillshare. I really hope you enjoy it. For this video, that's it. I really hope you enjoy it. Subscribe now to get more of this content. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up as well so I know that you enjoy it. And join our Discord community. There you can chat about everything related to game development. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time.